Hey yo, what's good? We back with another video. We're gonna be going over this track mat transition right here in DaVinci Resolve. I'm gonna leave a link in the description down below for pixels.com and also another YouTube channel has a list of track mats that you can download for free. But before I get into that, I'll let you know if you use code SPOOKY24 at checkout, you can get 20% off anything in the store until November 1st. All right, with this effect, I'm actually gonna go over two different ways you can recreate it. I got some clips here from the Buster Rhymes video. The middle clip is actually my ink clip that we're gonna use to create the transition. I'm just gonna box select them, right click, and go to new Fusion clip. Now it's going to Fusion. Now if you're on DaVinci Resolve 19, it'll add the background node and all this stuff in. We're gonna actually delete these merge nodes, move the background node down to the bottom. We're gonna keep that. If you're not using DaVinci Resolve 19, you wanna go and grab a background node and then just make sure you turn down the alpha, which I'm actually gonna connect this right quick so you can see what it look like. So you grab background node, it's gonna look like that, and then you turn the alpha down to zero. And then you just basically continue to follow along from here. So now I'm gonna click on my media one, hit one on the keyboard, bring it in the viewer, see which clip is which. Click on the media two. All right, that's the ink clip. So now I'm gonna hit F2, and type in ink. That's just so I know what clip is what. And then the clip I wanna transition from is gonna be media one. I'm gonna take the output of it and connect it to the background node. I'm just gonna create a merge. And then we're gonna set up the transition between the which is now media three and the ink clip. So to set this up, we're gonna go up here to the top. We're gonna grab a track mat. We're gonna right click the media three and connect it to the track mat. You should get this little menu. If you right clicked, you're gonna connect it to the background. You're gonna right click the ink clip and connect it to the mat control and connect it to the foreground. If I click on this and hit one on the keyboard, you just see the clip. You need to add one more node. So I'm gonna click on the ink node and hit control space. I'm gonna type in bitmap. By default, it's probably going to connect itself as a mask. I'm going to hold shift on the keyboard, remove that, move this up a little bit, and hold shift again, and connect it underneath the, the ink clip. So you're going to want your ink clip to be connected to the bitmap through the background node, or background input. Now I'm going to click on the Mac control, take the output of it, and connect it to the merge one. We should create a merge two. We're going to click on the Mac control node and go into the inspector tab. Where it says combine, we're going to select none, and drop down to combine alpha. Then we'll go back to the bitmap node, click on the bitmap and hit one on the keyboard, you just see all white. Because right now it's looking for an alpha channel and this clip by default does not have an alpha channel, which is basically like transparency. So what we're gonna do is change the channel from alpha to luminance. And you should see it come into play and now you see down here is actually already affected our clip. So then we'll go back to Mac control and then we're gonna hit post multiply image. So now as it plays out, we get our transition. Now it's a little slow so in case you wanna speed it up. Go up here and click on the ink clip. Hit control space and type in time. I'm gonna look for the time speed node. And then right here was this speed. You just wanna cut it up very gradually. You don't wanna cut it up too much. So right now I'm just gonna crank it up until I see the complete transition take place. Now I'm gonna go back to the edit page. I'm gonna show you how to do that same effect right here on the edit page. It's a little bit easier. And so the clip we transition into, we wanna be on top. And you see how it has a longer tail on it because I wanted to continue to play back. This clip here we're gonna click on, we're gonna go to the inspector tab, then we're gonna go to the composite mode. Hit the drop down, we're gonna change it to foreground. And then the clip underneath it, if I hit D to disable this clip here, we see here this is our track mat with our ink clip. Then we're gonna change it to drop down, basically do the same thing we did in the fusion, we're gonna select Luma. So now this is gonna create transparency for my original clips. If I actually, if I go back now and lengthen this out, I'm actually gonna box select all of this, move it over to the side and lengthen this out a little bit. So now the clip will play, then you start seeing the transition come into place. And once again, if you wanna speed it up, you just click on the clip, hit Control R, and then you just grab the top part of the clip here, and you'll see the mouse turn to two arrow heads, one facing each direction, click and drag, and you can speed it up. So right now I sped it up to 180, thus your transition has taken place. Once again, with this not having a default alpha, if you use the lumens, basically it's gonna find the brightest spot in that clip, and create trans, or basically gonna create a transition or a transparency with it. And so if you ever come across any black and white clips like this or videos or images like this that you wanna use for a transition or maybe even use for a mask, like for instance, if I grab a fusion composition and go into fusion and grab a background node, connect it to the media out. Then I'm gonna grab a secondary background node, connect it to this background node. I'm gonna change the color to white. And then with that second background node, I'm gonna grab an ellipse mask and basically it's just gonna be a still image. So if I move this out the way and grab this and move it over here, click on the Fusion Compound and then go into Luma. Now I have a mask right on the edit page. So if you had like a, if for instance, you were to go through and make a list of black and white images or found a, a bunch of black and white images that you want to use as a mask on the edit page, this would be a good way to do it. Alternatively, if I open this clip in Fusion and I get rid of this background note, 
grid merge, and then reconnect this. This now has alpha. So it basically this checkerboard pattern represents alpha. So if I go back to the edit page, the results will still be the same, but now I can actually just hit the drop down and go to alpha if I wanted to, because my clip now has a default alpha. Also too, if you go down and hit inverted alpha, you can basically swap them around. Then if you wanted to, you can use the transform tools right here in the Spectre tab on the edit page to move your mask around. So if you got any valuable information out of this video, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe to the channel if you're not already. Until next time, y'all be easy.